Hello and welcome back to another video. So, it's been a little while since I've been uploading any videos for you to watch. Um, there is a reason behind that that some of you guys may already know. Um, and that's due to the fact of a little bit of ill health and problems with my legs. And... Um, and uh, blood poisoning as well. So anyway, I'm over the I'm I'm, I'm over the worst of it, and uh, and I'm pulling through slowly. So unfortunately, I missed most of the predator season, which means that you guys have missed um, videos being made. I'm afraid, um, which is a bit of a shame because I had lots and lots planned. Anyway, without further ado, um, I haven't been out fishing, but Mr. Weller has. Yes, Keith Weller. My little uh, protege for, for Predator Fishing. He's been out and uh, he's done his very first Predator session. So what we want to see is how he got on. So he's filmed his first vlog. He's never done a vlog before. He's never done a um, any filming of his own and stuff. And, and like I say, this is quite a bit, bit of pressure on him because he's never been out pike fishing. And he really fancied the challenge to do so. Um, so what we'll do is, without further ado, we'll, um, we'll run the video now and you can have a look see how he got on. Good morning, welcome to another episode of the London Predator Angler. My name's Keith, uh, and you'll recognise me from videos in the past that I've done with, or Barry's done with me. Um, as you'll notice, the Barry's not here with me today. If you follow his uh, social media, you're, it's well documented that he's not been very well of late. In fact, he's been very poorly, so he's on the men now, um, but still not well enough to be able to get out which I know he's gutted about uh, and especially now coming towards the end of the pike season we've probably got well, I think it's next Tuesday Wednesday that it's the 14th of March so yeah unfortunately he won't get out again piking this season um, but I'm hoping to do him proud today I'm heading back down to the lake that we fished previously together back in December when Barry caught a double figure and uh, so I just navigate the roundabout. Yeah, so fingers crossed today that I can do Barry proud. Um, I've been fishing for Pike a couple of years now under the guidance of Barry. So I'm hoping today with everything that I've learned on my first solo mission for Pike that I'll be able to uh, bag a few. So. Fingers crossed, as you'll notice also as well that it's a bit bright out already today. It's slightly later than I anticipated and Barry and my dad in particular won't be surprised by this and it's already five to eight. Now, the original plan was to get to the lake for just before seven o'clock when the gates open, pay me ticket, just get set up and be fishing by half past. Um, like I said, I'm already now had a fight with the M25 traffic and I'm currently fighting with the school mums in the town centre and about half an hour still away from the lake so by the time I get to the lake it's going to be probably about half past eight get set up it's going to be nearly nine o'clock so I'm already behind schedule but like I said people that I go fishing with most won't be surprised by that I think the last time I went with Barry he was uh phone calls even though I was supposed to pick him up at six the phone's ringing at half past where are you? Are you on your way yet? And the same with me dad when we went last as well. So I've not got good form at the moment. And I, in fact, I'm frustrated with myself because I remember this morning the alarm going off at quarter to six. Turning it off, but feeling quite awake. Thinking, oh, I'll give it five minutes and I'll get up. And the next thing I know, the missus is standing above me. Are you going fishing today? Oh, damn, done it again. So. But having said that, every cloud and has a silver line in it. I do remember it was really raining this morning. I could hear it crashing on the conservatory roof when I woke up. So, although it's not raining at the moment, there's still lots of big puddles everywhere. So I'd imagine if I did leave the house at six and get there for seven, I probably would have been setting up in the rain. So I'm trying to think of the positives, even though I'm frustrated with myself. Um, check the weather forecast, it's currently six degrees looking to rise to about nine or even ten today so double figures which is a real godsend compared to what it was like last week with all that beast from the east and the snow that we had i think all the all the lakes would have been frozen certainly my local park lake was and so fingers crossed nice mild day looks a bit 
it's going to be quite a, a sunny day, so hopefully that doesn't have too much of an effect on the fishing. Um, and yeah, fingers crossed I can bag a few. <coughs> Bloody traffic. I'm so frustrated with myself for not waking up on time today, but hey ho. I did look at the website and I'll confirm it a bit later on when I speak to the bailiff that the um, the last time that Barry and I came down here because of the light time and everything we had to be off the lake by four o'clock. Having checked the website today it doesn't it does say that the lake closes at seven so if I do get down there a little bit later and I'm able to stay a bit later that'd be handy especially if we're catching. If not I probably want to come home by one o'clock so We'll see how we get on. I'm hoping as well that the pike could be on the feet today. Like I said, with the lake being frozen over and all the heavy snow that we had last week, now it's started to form four out and the temperatures increased slightly. I'm hoping that they might be on the feed, um, especially with spawning anytime soon for the pike due to start they might have a last little feed before before then so as always optimism is higher before we get there and I'll speak to you again a bit later on and probably won't have such a smile on my face anyway I'll leave it there and uh, when I get to the lake and get set up I'll, um, I'll catch up with you all soon bye for now well, hello again so I'm at the lake now been fishing for maybe 10 minutes or so as anticipated I arrived at the lake about half past eight so only an hour and a half later than I originally planned to get here um, and after having a chat with the bailiff he said it was still still had a the lake still had a bit of a lid on it Monday so it's only really thawed out Tuesday for the last two days today being Thursday the 8th um, but there's been a few people down there fishing there there was a match on it yesterday in the middle section of this lake that I'm fishing there's the peg that I'm fishing in there um, and 38 40 pound of silvers won the match so there's a lot of silver fish activity which sort of pushed me down this end of the lake knowing that there's bait fish here um, but also fishing this end of the lake because the original pegs that I wanted to fish my own fault for turning up late have been taken they're the pegs if you look over my shoulder if I stand here see with the vans in it it's two white vans just further up there um, the first white van is actually the peg that Barry fished last time which was the peg I was going to drop into I don't like to have preconceived ideas before I arrive at a lake but it's always nice to have a good starting point um, but there's an old boy fishing in there I think he fishes it quite regular so I've, already, I've also had a chat with him and Harry fishes it he's fishing both rods on the ledger today um, and he also actually fished yesterday on so there's, there's a lake we're fishing but parallel to that it's another lake over there and behind that island over there is where he fished yesterday and actually had a 17 pound pike yesterday as well as five other runs um some smaller jack pike so they are feeding which is good um and like i said there's two vans further up there the fellow who's fishing the furthest sort of closest towards the bailiff's hut he's actually already had one this morning of 16 pounds so yeah all, all good news, although slightly frustrating because if I'd have got up on time, perhaps I would have been in those pegs and ifs and ands and buts and maybes, but never mind. Um, I'm actually quite happy with the peg I'm fishing, if I can turn around and show you. Um, I command a lot of open water out in front of me, although I'm not fishing very far out, about a rod length, sort of either side of me to my left and right, just on, down the marginal shelf. Um, but what I do like about this peg is it's a real chop on the water, as you can see. It's actually quite a blustery day. But I've got that lovely little bay just sort of there, down to my right. Um, it's a really choppy up there. Down to my right, there's a lovely little bay where it's nice and calm. So I've actually got a bay, probably a rod length out of the rushes into the bay. Um, it's not as deep as the pegs that are further up. I think that's why they're a bit more popular this time of year because that's the deeper end of the lake. But yeah, they look pretty, uh, pretty good for right down there in, in the bay, just out of the way of wind. So we'll see how we go. The 
beauty about fishing here is, I mean, I'm obviously standing outside at the moment, away and in the wind, and it's, it's in the wind it's still got that sort of cold feel to it, but I mean, look, you can see how close you can park the car, so it's sort of sitting in the boot, out of the wind, still keeping an eye on my rods, so. Like I said, I've been fishing about maybe 15 minutes now, fingers crossed for a bite. And I'll keep you updated, see how we get on. Oh, while well, I'm there then, so just to talk you through what I'm using at the moment, uh, I brought a sort of a selection of dead baits with me. The rules here state that only sea baits are allowed, so no live baiting or coarse fish, not even if you catch them from the venue. Um, and I've started on sardine. Now, I mean, as you all probably know, that sardine are quite a soft bait, and while they'll still well, I've got a cool bag with a couple of ice blocks in it. They won't stay frozen solid for very long. So what I've done is I've started with those with the idea of that a bit later on in the day when they go, because they get really soft, although I'm not casting out very far, um, I want to know that the hook baits are staying on. So it gives me that little bit more confidence to know that they're still sort of quite hard as they're going out. So I've started both rods on sardine, extra large sardines. So they're a good size, good sort of five, six inch bait. Um, and we'll start on them, but I've also brought with me herring. And Barry had his fish on that last time we came. And what else have I got? Oh, I've got some pollen. And pollen is a naturally buoyant bait. So I've been toying with the idea, although I'm sort of new to getting into my pike fishing, of popping up baits and I mean some of the other waters that I fish, especially my local park lake, is, is a really weedy water. Um, here not so much, so I don't think it matters too much, bottom bait or slightly popped up, but um, pollen, pollen uh, are naturally buoyant bait because they've still got the swim bladder attached, so they will pop up at least for the first sort of 45 minutes, hour or so, straight up off the trace. So they'll, they'll be uh, something that I can maybe go on to later, like I said, herring. But currently sardine on both rods, so. Fingers crossed, and if I get anything, I'll uh, let you know. If not, I'll update you with some other goings on a bit later on. Right, hello again. Uh, time for an update. It's been a couple of hours since we spoke last. It was about quarter past nine when we first cast out. It's now quarter past 11. So I've just recast both rods, double checked everything, and retreated back to the car um i say retreated back to the car but it's become a lot more overcast which is, isn't necessarily a bad thing since we spoke last um but the wind has really picked up it's blown a bit of a hooligan out there at the moment um so yeah as you'll see the chair and everything's all been brought back all ran back to the as close to the car and i'm sitting in the boot so um originally i was fishing with both baits on a large sardine um, I've taken those both off now. Uh, the left hand rod, as you look at, is now on a herring bait, fishing about a rod length off of the near side margin. Um, and the other bait is on pollen, which is being fished into the bay. So even though the rest of the lake's really windy and really choppy, it's nice and calm down in that bay. So I'm still sort of optimistic that that might produce a bite. So that's where the rods are fished. Um, it's all pretty much the same places I had them before, slightly further out this time though, um, and with different baits, so we'll see if that produces. Um, further up the bank, the fellas that were fishing, that I mentioned this morning, in the pegs that we'd previously fished before, so put me at out without getting caught out in the wind, um, they're fishing further up there. Uh, the fellas had two fish now, he's fishing sort of closest to the bailiff's hut. He had a 16 pounder earlier on and he's also had an eight but an eight pounder i think he said and his mate uh early doors had one about five six pound a jack pike and he's just had one a bit smaller than a half pound or two so fish coming out still which is which is promising but just not this end of the lake which is frustrating um in fact the fellow who, who had the fish early early doors He's since moved lakes, although it's only 20 yards. He was fishing the lake that we were. He's now fishing in that side into that lake. And 
just thinking about plans going forward. Um, I'll probably give it another couple of hours sat here on the baits that I'm using, uh, probably to about one o'clock. And then what I've done with the sardine baits that I was using originally, I've cut those up into chunks and done a bit of pre-baiting if you like. So I've, um, I'm speaking to the bailiff on the previous trip back in December, he said that although this end of the lake's the deepest part and does produce bites, if we go for a quick wander without getting blown away, um, in fact, just sort of there over my shoulder with, uh, with that reed. sardine baits that I used early doors I've now cut up and done a bit of pre-baiting against that reed line so we'll see how we go and if, if it gets to about one maybe half past one and still no more action then I can always try over there so yeah that's plan B but plan A is still in operation with both rods on the ledger set up I was contemplating perhaps fishing the float but with the wind the way it is I think it'd become a bit more of a bit more of a pain I know you can fish it quite hard on the bottom with a heavier lead um, but to be honest uh, that that would be no different in presentation than fishing the leisure really so I think I'll stick to my guns um, I mean I could go sort of half depth on the float and fish a dart type that would catch the catch the wind um, and let that fish for me which is another option so we'll use the wind to my advantage and let fish more of the water let it sort of drift around with the wind if you like but to be honest uh, I think I'll probably give it a couple of hours on the ledges in this swim before I get itchy feet and try the lake next door which is only 20 yards behind me against that reed line that I've just put a bit of a uh, pre-bait in so we'll see how we go um, fingers crossed we'll get some uh, get some action shortly so it's coming up to one o'clock Nearly two hours since we spoke last and still no bites, no pike, no indications. So it's coming up to decision time. Uh, I'm a little bit stumped on what to do to be honest. Uh, I think when we spoke this morning I said that I'd check the website and that had said that the closing time of the lake today was 7 o'clock. I've since spoken to the bailiff and it turns out that uh, it's half past four that we need to be off the, off the lake. So that's limited my time somewhat and feels my my feet are starting to itch and I feel like I need to move. I've, I've not seen any sign of pike or any any sort of indication that they're in the area. So for me I've got a couple of options really. Option two, well option one is to stay where I am. Um, but if I don't move and I don't and I stick stick to my guns and I don't catch then I'll leave with that element of regret that, I, that what could have been if I'd have moved um, if I do move it means moving to the swim that I showed you earlier um, but like but since we spoke last the winds picked up further still so that's why I'm talking in the back of the car uh, so you can hear me to keep out of the wind but what I'll do in a moment is I'll go and sort of show you option two and perhaps option three and see what we think and uh, see where we settle up so option two here is to fish the other side of the lake against the rushes but the wind is absolutely howling into there but where the reed bank is but on the other side of the reed bank option three is slightly calmer and does look good for a bite but we'll have to uh you never know what the right decision is so i think a move is definitely on the cards it's been sort of four 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 and a half hours since i've been here and to have no indication i think i need to to try something else so let's have a look at so the option options. one is to stick to my guns and where i'm currently fishing uh, the left hand rod is just probably a rod length off that near margin the right hand rod is in this bay as you can see it's nice and calm in there um and looks good for a bite i haven't spoken to the fellas who are fishing the old boys who are fishing further up the bank and where they've caught fish from have all been sort of just out of the wind so I mean it screams out like to me there but like I said I've been there for four 
four hours and I'm going to buy it. So, option two is to just move 20 yards, just take it down the bank ever so slightly, and see if we can get a bite. Perhaps over in this bay, but as you can see already, that the wind's changed and it's really hacking in here. Really windy. Um, completely different lake. It looks like we're in a completely different time zone with the wind that's blowing in over here. So with my right hand rod, perhaps I'll go down the right hand rushes and the left hand rod, perhaps just the rod length out of there. So that's an option. Um, and option three, fishing again on this other lake, but the other side of this reed bank that's coming out into the middle of the lake. Just get down there. Again, looks good for a buyer. This is quite possibly the option that I might go for. Again, the wind's blowing in here. But where that reed bank is, so we're on the other side of it now. Maybe put the left hand rod down on sort of on towards the point of the reed bed there. It's still windy here, but so we're just out of the wind ever so slightly. And put perhaps the right hand rod, maybe a couple of rod out into the open water. So that's my dilemma. I'm gonna make a decision shortly and uh, get back to you with what I've decided and hopefully with a pike on the bank. Hello again. So we moved swims to option three and lo and behold, after only five minutes, I've had my first fish of the day. I can't tell you how over the moon I am, but I've got the fish on the unhooking mat. I've unhooked him, weighed him, and it's a new personal best. 15 pounds, six ounces. I'm over the moon. I'll just uh, hold her up for you. I can take a few shots and get her back safely. See how over the moon I am. That is my first solo capture, and uh, Barry's going to be proud of me. Get in there. Fifteen pounds six ounces. Beautiful. <sighs> Result. As you can see that we did settle for option three. Uh, it's, the wind is really hacking in here, but it's just the other side of that reed bed. Um, so, and the, the fish came from the left hand rod that was fished just short of the point of the reed bed that you can see up there on your left hand side. Um, Herring was the hook bait. And uh, funny enough, that was the same hook bait that Barry used when we came in December and had his fish on. So. Herring hook bait seems to be the one. I've got my last herring again on the left hand rod and on the right hand rod a uh, large sardine. So, fingers crossed, perhaps we'll get another bite within the next hour. But if not, I'm just made up with, with how today went. I'd, when, especially when you don't think it's going to happen and you're moving pegs and And uh, what a way to end, this, end the predator season. Well, what a session that was. I hope you've enjoyed the latest episode of London Predator Angling. And I couldn't be happier of how it went. It's the first time I've ever done a vlog. So although I've appeared in probably half a dozen, maybe more of the London Predator Anglers videos before. This is the first time I've uh, attempted to do my own video log and I hope you've all enjoyed it. If you have, please subscribe. 
and on a personal note to come fishing pre well pike fishing predator fishing for the first time on my own having been with Barry probably half a dozen times over the last couple of years and to put into practice everything he's taught me um, and to bag a personal best 15 pounds 6 ounces is a, is a real achievement and I'm really proud and the first person I called after the capture was Barry and sent him a picture and we spoke on the phone for 20 minutes and and just like to say on record if it wasn't for Barry then that capture would never have been possible the things he's shown me over the last couple of years how to handle the pike and the fish welfare being most important um, and not just that sort of how to set up fish location all of those sorts of things has has made me the predator angler I am today and yeah to put on record thank you Barry um, and to now be able to call myself a predator angler is, uh, is a proud moment. I mean, I've fished a long, long time. I'm not a complete novice. I've never fished a pike before the last couple of years, but I've always been into fishing. I've always fished for from fishing matches as a junior for a club to to the carp angler that I tend to normally be. But be able to uh, add pike fishing to my armoury and is a is a real gives me a real sense of achievement so I'm just, uh, super proud of how today went especially after waking up late and getting to the lake a little bit late and starting off in one peg and moving to another and then and then catching and like I said to be able to put that all in a video log for you all has been been a real pleasure so I hope you've enjoyed it on that note I wish you tight lines and perhaps I'll see you in some videos over the summer me and Barry have got uh, some sessions planned, perhaps the end of March, beginning of April, to go perch fishing. And then uh, in, into early spring, perhaps some tension cruising. And then again, as last year, try and squeeze in a, a cat fishing session and perhaps even, even some cheeky carp fishing sessions. So. And then before you know it, we'll be back into October and the pike season will begin again. And I'm more than ready for it now, so I can't wait for that. Take care guys, bye for now. So I hope you really enjoyed that video. Uh, I was over the moon for him. Um, as he said, he rang me up um, just after having the fish. Um, and we was on the phone for about 20 minutes and I was, I was, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe not only he'd gone out, done his first video, which, you know, massive kudos to him. It's not easy talking in front of the camera and, you know, Quite often when I talk, I get tongue-tied and tongue-twisted and so on and so forth. But um, I'm completely over the moon with um, with over what he's done. It's fantastic, and I was gutted I couldn't get on a bank with him. I was there in I was there in spirit, but um, <laughs> no. Um, we spoke numerous occasions before he went uh, over various things just to cover, you know, like um, the type of swims he fish and that kind of thing uh, leading up to when he went. And um, lo and behold, bagging a, a pit, not only bagging a fish, but bagging a PB and unhooking himself and, you know, just bringing everything that I showed him into play. It brings, I can see he was over the moon, but it brings great joy to me as well to see other people, other people that I've helped um, actually do very well and catch their own fish. It's, it's fantastic. Um, pike fishing's not easy, you know. The massive thing with pike fishing is the care of the fish, the unhooking. I'd say that's probably the most important thing when it comes to pike fishing, the the, the handling of the fish and the um, and the unhooking. You know, I keep saying to Keith that you know eventually you're gonna get you're gonna get um, gill rake and cuts and and knocks. It's gonna happen eventually. So you just it's overcoming that fear of, of of getting nicks on your fingers. Really, he has no reason to put his hand in the mouth. Like anybody who starts off pike fishing, you know, you no need to put your hand in the mouth. You know, it's all about chinning the fish, gilling the fish, um, taking hooks out from underneath. Um, if you need to go through the gills, you've got to be very careful. You know, all these things will come and experience. You know, tells. I've been doing it twenty years. So everybody has to learn somewhere and start somewhere. So he's not the first person I've taught. I've taught quite a few people in the past, um, close friends and work colleagues and stuff. And 
you know, I'm sure he won't be the, the last person at all. What's really good with Keith is we're very close friends, we're really good mates, um, best of buddies. Um, we actually started working in the tackle industry together, for those that didn't know. Um, we worked in a place called Decathlon, um, which was a French-based uh, sports company. Um, they had quite a few stores around the country, loads in France, because it's a French company, loads in France and Spain and on the continent. And um, yeah, we started working in the one in Surrey Keys in London together. You know, Keith back then was a matchman, um, very young kid. You know, I think he was about 17, 18. I was about 21. And uh, we made a lot of money for the company, done very well for the company. I was the predator consultant. He's the match consultant. We had a cart consultant, a fly consultant. So we had people who knew various areas. And although Keith was only 17 at the time, he had done numerous matches. You know, he had caught loads of fishing matches. Um, won numerous matches, even as a youngster, when he used to go fishing for his club and his dad. Um, they used to go to a, a particular fishing club in London um, and they used to fish numerous matches every Sunday and that. So Keith had a really good pedigree with um, with match fishing. Then he progressed and moved on to cart fishing. And, um, you know, I never ever thought I'd see the day that he would take up pike fishing. He never ever showed any interest in it before until sort of recent years, couple of years. I said to him, look, let's go up on the fence and give it a go. And, and, you know, back up there, although I did pretty much most of the work helping him, he had uh, uh, a fish just under 13 pound up there. So um, for him to go on and then catch a, you know, a new personal best of 15 pound plus, you know, it's, and to do it all on his own, it's, it's, it's rewarding for me as well. So I can see you probably see the joy in his face. Um, he was over the moon. He really was. Um... So yeah, we've got future plans as Keith alluded upon. So we're going to be fishing um, lots of predators through the summer. Um, I'd like to, I'd like for Keith to to sample other predators as well. You know, he's had his first catfish last year. Uh, there's a little mini clip on the video uh, on the channel, which I'll stick up in the uh, corner so you can watch that. Um, caught his first catfish, um, and we also, you know, I like eel fishing. I don't think Keith would be particularly interested in eel fishing but i'm going to hopefully do a couple of eel videos this summer depending on where we go um and lots and lots of perch fishing as well um keith is not a big fan of perch i'll be honest um i am a massive fan of perch because it's my favorite fish but i think he finds the big ones impressive but in order to find the big ones you have to go and fish for them so yeah hopefully next month we'll be doing our first predator session for perch um on a particular local well i say local um a lake down in kent so watch out for that one so there'll hopefully be another video up next month at some point and um f just quickly to uh to to let you know on the next video uh, on the next video in the uh coming months <laughs> through the summer i'm going to be making uh how-to videos on how to make your own predator floats now not many people who go predator fishing actually make how-to video on how to make floats you know you're either a float maker that kind of thing or you're not so <laughs> i actually do both and i've just started to get into it so i've started to make my own predator floats as you can see here there we go got perch bobbers and pike bobs and well pike gazette buns and there's all different types and styles and colors and you know we'll go into that a little bit more when i start to make them i may even do a competition on the channel where you can get a chance to win one of the finished articles or even maybe put in a request of what colour and what style you want and I'll make it for you. Just have to wait a little bit longer for it. But yeah, I'm going to be showing you how to make these. It's not just these I make as well. I also make course floats as well. So as you can see there, these are very basic regimented wagglers, body wagglers, chubbers. You know, it's not just, uh, it's not just predator floats that I'm making. So there'll be a video how to make perch floats, how to make pike floats, how to make a various different um, types of floats uh, for different styles of uh, course fishing. Um, last thing to say is um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully I'll be out with Keith next time or Jack. You know, we, we're coming up to uh, warmer months. So me and Jack will start fishing the Thames and start fishing around the docks and that. So hopefully Jack will start featuring in some of the videos as well. I just want to say thanks for watching. Please like and comment below. It would be really nice. And I'm sure Keith would like to find out um, how you guys felt about him catching his first uh, first pike on his own and a PB. And um, don't forget to, um, to subscribe to the channel. It really does help the channel out. 
if you hit that notification bell, um, you will get updated straight away when a new video goes up. So, sorry for the lack of content for the last few months. There was plans to do loads and loads of pike fishing and some Xander fishing trips, but unfortunately, you know, as life gets in the way and circumstances, it's just one of those things. But trust me, next month we'll be out on the perch. So, thanks for watching, tight lines and dead baits, and I'll catch you all soon.